Hi, my name is Esther Nakajugo. I'm Uganda's ambassador for women and girls. I'm 19 years old and I'm at my first year at the university. I won the Women Achievers Award and the World Savers Excellency Award as Uganda's Young Personality of the Year. I traveled from Karamoja to Kampala last night. As you may be aware, Karamoja is the remotest region in Uganda. And I have a story for you. At a village called Lorenge Duat lived a girl called Elaine. Elaine got married at 15 years to a man called Bemba. Bemba was a man that was got for her by her grandparents and five cows were given up for dowry. Elaine was now pregnant with her ninth child. But during her previous pregnancies, she was advised by the health worker not to have any more children otherwise she would risk her life. Elaine was unobedient and very hardworking. At her husband's farm, her and her daughters grew pineapples, vegetables, and eggs for sale. Her husband kept the money in the house, in the room where they slept. Although her labor pain started two days before, she could not go to the clinic because her 10 months old daughter was also ill. On the third day, she told her husband she had to go to the hospital. He simply went to the village to meet his friends and finalize a deal about selling his farm products. And seriously short of money, Ellen went to see a traditional bath attendant. Elaine was in such a bad state that the traditional bath attendant referred her to the town clinic. At the town clinic, they realized that she needed blood transfusion and that would only be done at the district hospital. Elaine said she could not go to the district hospital before informing her husband. And this is when the health worker had to inform her that this was a matter of life and death and she had to go to the hospital immediately. This was a very, very tricky situation. After a log of haggling and convincing, Elaine was then put in an ambulance to the, the district hospital. But her condition had deteriorated. On their way, in order to keep her awake, the nurse started talking to her. So she asked her why she had to risk her life again. And this is what she said. She said, my husband loves children. And even when I refuse to give them to him, other women will. And perhaps I need more hands at the farm. In this region, the angel of death is known to take people's souls shortly after midnight. And this was the time when Elaine died. She was only 25 years at the prime of her life. Every hour, every day, at least 30 women die from complications of pregnancy and childbirth in Sub-Saharan Africa. Each year, 2.5 million teenagers in developing countries choose to end unintended pregnancies by undergoing abortions. Teenage pregnancy currently stands at 25% and it's one of the highest in the world. It is responsible for the stagnated statistics for maternal mortality currently standing at 310 per 100,000 live births. One in every four girls you come across in Uganda is already a mother or is pregnant with their first child. 49% of Ugandan girls are married off before their 18th birthday. Family Planning Summit held in the United Kingdom in July 2012 galvanized political will and financial support. Uganda committed to increase the budget for family planning by 30%. Family planning could prevent many more deaths. Family planning saves adolescents' lives. Teenage pregnancy poses health risks not only for the babies but also for the young mothers, particularly those under the age of 18. Boyfriend, girlfriend, friend, everything has an end except family. Over the last decade, Family planning in many countries has lost focus. Policymakers have turned their attention to other issues such as HIV AIDS, infectious diseases, and evaluating persistent poverty. Family planning methods. Child planning methods include oral contraceptives, the barrier methods such as male and female condoms, diaphragms, and sperm sides. The pleasure is not in doing the thing. The pleasure is in planning it. I've told you, 